Welcome to Wednesday, Hump Day Wednesday, September 16th, 2020. Well, again, we just don't have much to talk about. We've got typical September weather. Typical September weather usually has stretches of fair, warm conditions where not much goes on. Of course, you have occasional excitement like we had last week. We'll have some smoky haze through Friday, and then some relief is coming. We're going to see relief from that smoky haze. We'll show you why here in a moment. We have a cool front that arrives into the region late Friday into Saturday and Sunday. It's not much of a front, but it'll bring a little weather. Most of next week looks pretty quiet, folks. Next week, there might be a couple of weak fronts, but there's really nothing next week that looks very exciting. We'll give you a solar update as well. Here is the current smoke map across the United States, and you can see now the smoke has made it coast to coast with the thick smoke from the California, Washington, Oregon fires moving clockwise around a big high then being pulled by the upper level winds across the United States. I think we're probably seeing the smoke in terms of its extent reaching its peak here over the next two or three days in terms of how widespread and thick it is. But you can see that its smoke is really just about everywhere. You got to go to the Gulf Coast to get away from it completely. And even then you're going to be dealing with Sally down there. So there's really nowhere to hide from the smoke, at least here for the next two or three days. Now, beyond Friday, there's some help coming. First of all, we've got a trough low that's sitting off the West Coast. It's basically been stalled out for the last several days, but it's beginning to move now. So between now and Saturday, we will see areas of rain and some thunderstorm activity and cooler wet weather moving some of the fire areas here in from far northern California through Washington and Oregon. And we're also going to see some shower activity spread into the Rockies of Idaho, even portions of western Wyoming, even into portions of Nevada and Utah. Now, no one's going to get anything really heavy here, but there's going to be some shower activity developing out ahead of this trough. And the trough is going to move from the west to the east across the northern Rockies this weekend. So this low has got to cross this area here where the fires are really are at the worst. So while it won't extinguish the fires, it will not put them out. It will certainly reduce the smoke and help out with the situation there. You can see the upper level low right off the coast of Washington and Oregon. This is as of today. It's been right in that spot for the last few days. Here's Sally. Sally going to accelerate, cause flooding and head like that as it gets picked up by this trough here, that will all accelerate off to the east here over the next couple of days. By Friday afternoon, there it is, the low finally over Oregon, bringing relief, and that trough headed this way, knocking down the high pressure ridge that's overhead. So by Saturday, the low and the cold front, now moving through the Rockies, will bring cooler weather, not a big drop in temperature, but enough to notice, and there's gonna be a little bit of shower activity Saturday into Sunday across the northern Rockies, and across the northern and central high plains, but it's not a big weather maker. By Thursday, look at that, high pressure rebuilds right over Colorado and Wyoming. So despite the front coming through this weekend, we go right back to high pressure next week. So next week is gonna be another week where there really won't be a lot going on. We do see some changes upstream with that next low in the Gulf of Alaska forming. There's some other weather back up here across the northern Pacific that will lead to changes at the end of the month. And there they are. This is around Saturday, September 26th. You can see the next front coming in. High pressure beginning to bulge up into the Gulf of Alaska with this big low up over the Aleutians. So up north here, we've got some bigger changes coming. See this blue area here? Well, you know, the days are getting shorter, especially up in these higher northern latitudes. So cold air is gonna start to build up again. So right at the end of September into early October, there's going to be a change in the weather. But up until then, folks, we're just going to kind of hum along here with not too much going on. Wanted to give you a solar update. The sun has gone back into a slumber. Look at this. We have gone almost a month of no sunspots, and that's after sunspot activity picked up a little bit in June, July, and August. But now we've had 70% of our days in 2020 with no sunspots. That was after the peak of no sunspots last year of 281. This right here is a very impressive stretch of very, very low solar activity. This is going to end up probably being uh, historic in terms of something we haven't seen in one or 200 years. We'll show you a little bit more about that here in a minute. We have bottomed out. In fact, NASA yesterday came out with a press conference and announced the beginning of Solar Cycle 25 has started. 
we have bottomed out with solar cycle 24. So you can see this is where you are right now. So the prediction is, is that we'll start to see an increase in sunspot activity going in and peaking right around 2025 or so, then dropping again. Now, I want you to notice the amplitude of the solar cycle 25 prediction, which is right on par with the last solar cycle. You got to keep in mind that solar cycle 24 is one of the weakest solar cycles we've had in a long, long time. And solar cycle 25 is not expected to show an increase. In fact, it's predicted to be at the same or maybe even lower than solar cycle 24. For folks who keep track of this podcast, we talk about cosmic rays. We talk about when you have low sunspot activity, there's more cosmic rays hitting the earth. And that is shown and is continuing to be studied as a possible link to climate conditions when you have increases and decreases in solar activity. So solar minimums and solar maximums we're finding are more and more important. And you know what you also have at solar minimums? You have La Niña's and you have strong La Niña's, especially right when you exit a solar minimum. And look what we have right now. We have a La Niña. This is something that is easily predictable as long as you keep track of the solar cycles. You're always going to have a La Nina, sometimes strong ones, right as you leave a solar minimum. And that's exactly what's showing out in the Pacific right now. We'll talk more about that in the coming months. Thanks for listening to watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll see you on Thursday.